Welcome to what passes as the 2020 Virtual Catholic Media Awards. I'm Chaz Muth from Catholic News Service, coming to you from Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. Carol, I love you, I love you, and I don't care who knows it. What, what did you say? I'll tell you later. Hi, I'm Mark Zimmerman, the editor of the Catholic Standard newspaper of the Archdiocese of Washington, Brand Placement. And this is my wife, Carol. It's our first date in nearly three months. And I brought Carol to the Archdiocese of Washington's Pastoral Center Courtyard. Thanks, Mark. Yes, I'm Carol Zimmerman with Catholic News Service. And we also are joined with our colleague from Catholic News Service, Juno, in Rome. Hello, I'm Juno Rocho Estevez, reporting outside St. Peter's Basilica. As you can see, it's fairly empty. Do you know, it's good to see you out of lockdown and it's good to see you in your mask. Uh, I'm also wearing my mask for two reasons. One is to prevent the spread of COVID-19. And two, a reminder that I need to uptick my daily intake of breath mints. <laughs> On a serious note, we must acknowledge what a year this has been. We mourn and we pray for all those who have been sick or who've died from the coronavirus. We also pray for those who have cared for them, their family members and medical professionals. And we pray for those who have been impacted by the economic downturn, including some of our Catholic Press colleagues whose publications have been shut down during the pandemic. We've also in recent weeks been covering protests against police brutality and racial injustice. The events of this year demonstrate how important the work is that we do as Catholic journalists as we share news and stories of faith and hope on all of our platforms. Now back to our banter. Like all of you, I've been working hard these past few months from my home office on our dining room table. You know, Carol, I feel kind of like a beast of burden. And I think I feel a song coming no, on. No, no, don't even go there, no, no. It has been quite a year. We've had a lot of time separated from our families, our friends, our colleagues, and we've also had a lot of time with the people we live with. We've had a lot of not being able to use our basic things, not being able to get our hair cut or colored, and um, not getting be able to dress up, except for Mark, who's immune, his hair's fine, and he dresses up even when he works at home. But um, speaking of hair, Chaz, I notice you have some, some curly locks going on there. Yeah, you know, the hair is, uh, <laughs> what can I say? This whole pandemic thing has, made it impossible to get someone to actually cut your hair you know well at least a barber anyway i mean i you know kind of thought about maybe doing the flow bee or something like that but you know this is this is sort of the end result of everything that we've been going through wait what you know what hey i see someone over there with some hedge clippers hey yeah you you yeah can you can you give me a hand here yeah yeah hold on just a second Okay, yeah, that's much better now. Now we can go on. Um, actually, you know what? If you can do me a favor, if you can um, go ahead and fly on over to the Washington metro area and go ahead and see if you can't do something with my colleague Carol Zimmerman's hair because she's having some problems. Thanks, Chaz. It feels better. Carol, your hair did look different. That's what happens when you're married to me for 28 years. So let's get on with this virtual awards party. First, we're going to hear a few words from J.D. Long Garcia, president of the Catholic Press Association, who's coming to us from Phoenix, Arizona. Hi, ¿qué tal, hermanos? Bienvenidos. Welcome to the 2020 Catholic Media Awards. We celebrate the work of Catholic media every year. We join together as a community of communicators and hold each other up. Catholic media plays a crucial role in the life of the church. Over the last several months, Catholic media in the United States and Canada have told the story of the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as ongoing racial injustice. We have shared stories of loss and inspiring accounts of self-sacrifice. Year after year, Catholic media highlights the inspiring stories of the saints among us and gives a voice to the voiceless. During hard times like these, we come together to support each other. The annual award program recognizes excellence and inspires us to do better. I know you're anxious to hear the, this year's winners. I sure am. And true story, uh, as I'm recording this, I don't know who the winners are. But before we get to that, just a few words of thanks to some very important people. I'd like to recognize the work of the awards committee, le led by Ana Rodriguez Soto, editor of the Florida Catholic and the Archdiocese of Miami, 
Thanks also to Chaz Muth of Catholic News Service for, for, for producing this video, which I'm sure took a long time. I also want to thank Amy Koala, our Vice President uh, from the Compass in Green Bay, Wisconsin, who was instrumental in pulling together this uh, virtual conference, and Tim Walter, our Executive Director, who has provided ongoing leadership. As you may have noticed, things are a little different this year. Uh, no dinner, uh, for one, at the awards. Uh, it's always so delicious. And uh, we also didn't get a chance to spend time together face to face. Um, and it, but also, this year the conference was free. And that was only possible because of the generous support of our sponsors. EWTN, the Knights of Columbus, the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, Faith Publishing, and My Parish App. Thank you all, all for making this possible. Your support demonstrates that you recognize the, how important it is for the church to tell her own story. We must never hide our light under a basket. Through Catholic media, the church allows her light to shine before all. If you're not a part of the association and you're watching this, I hope you'll consider becoming a part of our media family. In what follows, we will recognize some of the exceptional work that has been done in the past year. But there is always more work to be done, uh, and we need many laborers. Uh, members of the Catholic, of Catholic News Service will present this year's awards. Uh, this year, by the way, uh, CNS is celebrating 100 years of service to the church. just want to remind you, in case you've forgotten, to, to buy them a gift. Uh, maybe the calendar year is okay, so you have about six months. I'm sure they'll accept it then. Uh, no, but seriously, uh, many thanks to Greg Erlinson and the entire team at CNS uh, for this video and for all that you do for us day after day. You really do make our job so much easier. And to all the award winners, congratulations. Felicitaciones, mi gente. You inspire us to do greater work for the greater glory of God. Before we get to the awards, we have a little something from our friends and colleagues up north at the Catholic Review in Baltimore, who will be hosting the 2021 Catholic Media Conference as long as we don't have restrictions on the sizes of public gatherings. I'm late for church, but for you, I think I got a moment or two. I just remembered the Catholic Media Convention is coming to Baltimore, hon. And so we thought a little video showing you our town would be a great idea. So come on along. Welcome to Baltimore, hon. From festivals to markets to concerts and more, Baltimore is a diverse community of history and culture. You can be more touristy at the Inner Harbor, where you can stroll along the promenade enjoying its many shops, restaurants, and a legacy of maritime treasures. Journey under the sea, hike a rainforest, and witness conservation efforts at the aquatic world of the National Aquarium. And stars always shine bright at the Maryland Science Center with their planetarium, hands-on exhibits, and IMAX theater. You can be more patriotic at Fort McHenry, where our country fought the War of 1812, and Francis Scott Key wrote his famous poem that became our national anthem. That was loud, hon! The b &O Railroad Museum has your ticket to experience locomotive transportation power from a bygone era. You can be more cultural or literary exploring antiques from around the world at the Walters Art Gallery, or visiting the tiny brick home or grave of the ingenious 19th century writer Edgar Allan Poe. If you like baseball, be more fanatic watching a nose game at Oriole Park at Camden Yards while enjoying a dog and a beer. Ain't a beer cold. What can't be more tempting than a world famous Maryland crab cake or enjoying steamed crabs with family and friends? we have crabs for Christmas. Look it up. Baltimore, a city on the water with so much to offer. No trip would be complete without visiting America's first cathedral, the beautifully restored National Shrine of the Basilica of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary on Cathedral Street. Its vaulted dome, Stations of the Cross masterpieces, and Undercroft, where early and recent church leaders are interred offer a glimpse into this country's Catholic legacy. And now a special message from the Archbishop of Baltimore. I'm Archbishop William Laurie of Baltimore, personally inviting you to join me in the Premier See 
for the Catholic Media Convention, June 15th through the 18th, 2021. It's important now more than ever that we effectively communicate a message of love, respect, and dignity to our Catholic community and to our communities at large. The Archdiocese of Baltimore strives to be a light brightly visible, inviting everyone to become missionary disciples of Jesus Christ. So let us be more effective in communicating a spirit of faith and hope. Be more together and be more faithful. I look forward to seeing you in Baltimore for the 2021 Catholic Media Convention. So glad you got to come along and see a little bit of my hometown, Farmer Maryland. Now, don't you forget, mark your calendars, and we'll see you soon. Welcome to Balmer, hon. Oh, wait a minute. A lot of people helped me put this little video together. They gave us all these photos and videos for free. Can you imagine, hon? They're all such nice people. A big Baltimore, hon, thank you to use all. Bye now, hon. Ugh, I can't believe I forgot to say thank you. It must have been the hair. Are we ready? I've got my trusty iPad here, ready to read some results. We're going to begin with the Father John Couture Social Media Evangelization Award. This award recognizes the positive impact of a social media campaign to make Jesus known and loved. The winner receives a certificate and a cash of $300 to underwrite the cost of technology in developing and or continuing their evangelization efforts. So the 2020 Father John Couture Social Media Evangelization Award goes to Bridget O'Boyle from the Diocese of Arlington for her Just One Yes campaign. Every year, the Catholic Press Association sponsors the CPA Student Journalism Awards. This year, one of our student award winners, Brianna Lopez from Barry University, who won the Best Writing Single Story Feature Award, is here to say a few words. Hi, my name is Brianna Lopez and I'm from Barry University where I study English with a specialization in professional writing. I hope everyone is doing well during these really rough times. I recently won the Catholic Press Association Award for Best Writing Single Story Feature for my article, Is a Mental Health Day Reason Enough to Miss Class? This award is important to me because I think mental health is a very up and coming topic in the industry and in the world. And I think it especially affects college students because of the added stress and anxiety that college puts on students' everyday lives. Um, and I believe mental health days, which are days where students would be allowed excused absences in order to kind of reconvene within themselves and make themselves feel better in whatever way they know how. I think these days are extremely important ways to combat mental health issues without leading students to extremes like suicide or dropping out of college. And I think my article aims to combat mental health issues and the stigma behind them and a very small scale that I one day hope to bring to a very large scale when I kind of grow my platform and grow further into my career. And also, before we, before we read the uh, award winners, I want to po apologize for any mispronunciations of publications or of people. It's all Carol's fault. Don't blame us, blame the coronavirus. Now for the Catholic Media Awards. We'll begin with Magazine Division. Magazine Newsletter of the Year, National General Interest Magazines. Honorable mention, America Magazine. Honorable mention, Catholic Digest. Third place, U.S. Catholic. Second place, Living City Magazine. And the first place award goes to St. Anthony Messenger. For Magazine Newsletter of the Year, Diocesan Magazines. Honorable mention goes to the Central Minnesota Catholic. In third place, Faith Erie Magazine. In second place, Vermont Catholic. And the first place award goes to... <laughs> Unleash the Gospel. <laughs> magazine, Newsletter of the Year. Mission Magazine's Overseas and Home. Honorable mention goes to... Comboni Missions Magazine. 
Another honorable mention goes to Glen Mary Challenge. Third place, One Magazine. Second place, Marinol. And first place goes to The Holy Land Review. And for Magazine Newsletter of the Year, Religious Order Magazines and Print Newsletters. Third place goes to American Catholic Studies Newsletter. Second place, Heart to Heart. And first place goes to Jesuits Midwest Magazine. In the category of Magazine Newsletter of the Year, professional and special interest magazines, including clergy, religious, prayer, and spiritual magazines. Honorable mention goes to Soul Magazine. Another honorable mention goes to Horizon, Journey of the National Religious Vocations Conference. In third place, Catechist. In second place, American Catholic Studies. And in first place, the award goes to Health Progress. Best Newspaper, Non-Weekly Diocesan Newspaper, Circulation 25,000 or Less. Honorable Mention, The Catholic Spirit, New Jersey. Honorable Mention, Tennessee Register. Third place, Florida Catholic, Palm Beach. Second place, Catholic Sentinel. And the first place award goes to the Catholic Standard. Best newspaper, non-weekly diocesan newspaper, circulation 2,501 or more. Honorable mention goes to the Texas Catholic. Another honorable mention, the Catholic Telegraph. Third place. Texas Catholic Herald. Second place, the Catholic Advocate. And first place goes to Catholic News Herald. For best newspaper, weekly diocesan newspaper circulating 25,000 or less, honorable mentions go to the Compass and the Catholic Herald Madison. In third place, the BC Catholic. In second place, The Observer. And the first place award goes to Catholic Herald Milwaukee. In the best newspaper, weekly diocesan newspaper category of circulation 25,001 or more, honorable mention goes to the record. Honorable mention, Pittsburgh Catholic. Third place, Clarion Herald. Second place, The Tablet. And first place, St. Louis Review. Best newspaper, national newspaper. Honorable mention, Our Sunday Visitor. Honorable mention, Catholic Health World. Third place, the Catholic Register. Second place, National Catholic Register. First place, <laughs> National Catholic Reporter. For best Spanish language publication, honorable mentions go to Vida Nueva and El Mensajero Católico. In third place, goes El Pueblo Católico. Second place, El Pregonero. And in first place, the award goes to Misioneros. Now it's time for the Individual Excellence Awards. And first up, Advertising Business Marketing Professional of the Year. Honorable mention, Mary Podesta from Catholic San Francisco. Another honorable mention, Adam Mitchell from Marinol. Third place, oh gosh, I hope I don't mangle this name too badly. 
Len Caparil from The Tablet. Second place, Bob Jacques from The Catholic Sentinel. And first place goes to Jennifer Miley from the Diocese of Greenberg. Communications Director of the Year. Honorable mention goes to Billy Atwell from the Diocese of Arlington. Third place, Jennifer Drow from the Florida Catholic in Orlando. Second place, Anne Marie Welsh from the Diocese of Erie. And first place, Mike Brown from the Archdiocese of San Francisco. For Social Media Professional of the Year, honorable mention goes to Lincoln Ho from Grandin Media. Another honorable mention goes to Catherine Tamola from The Tablet. Third place goes to Rick Del Vecchio from Catholic San Francisco. Second place goes to Catherine Laguna from the Diocese of Orlando. And the first place award goes to Mary Stachira Lopez from the Arlington Catholic Herald. Graphic Artist Designer of the Year. Honorable mention, Paul Grillo from One Magazine. Honorable mention, Mary Margaret Carroll from the Diocese of Burlington. Third place, Kimberly Asensio from Misioneros. Second place, Chris Jugo from Grandin Media. First place, <laughs> Diana Mastroguillo from Mary Knoll. Now, Photographer of the Year. Honorable mention, Ben Torres from the North Texas Catholic. Another honorable mention, Juan Guajardo from the North Texas Catholic. Third place, Jeff Withrow from the Catholic Courier. Second place, Dennis Callahan from Catholic San Francisco. And first place goes to Lisa Johnston from the St. Louis Review. For Writer of the Year Spanish, the second place goes to Giovanna Soria from Misioneros. And the first place award goes to Maria Pia Negrochin from Misioneros. Individual Excellence, Writer of the Year in English. Third place, Teresa Lawrence from the Tennessee Register. Second place, Katie Scott from the Catholic Sentinel. In first place, Tom Tracy from the Florida Catholic in Miami. Videographer, Video Producer of the Year. Honorable mention, Dan Allen from Faith ND. Honorable mention, Jai Angish from the Archdiocese of Newark. Third place, Dustin Etheridge from The Tablet. Second place, Alex Rosales from North Texas Catholic. And first place, <laughs> Geraldine Shea Rost from the Diocese of Nashville. For Editor of the Year Spanish, the second place award goes to Silvia Cuellar from El Católico de Rhode Island. And the first place award goes to David R. Aquije from Misioneros. Now it's time for Editor of the Year. Third place, Paul McMullen from the Catholic Review, Baltimore. Second place, Ann Augerton from the Arlington Catholic Herald. And first place goes to Mary Ann Steiner from Health Progress. Now to Multimedia Journalist of the Year. Honorable mention, Michael O'Loughlin from American Magazine. Honorable mention, Mary Siemens from the Diocese of Greensburg. Third place, Gina Capalazzi from the Catholic Courier. Second place, Jai Agnes from the Archdiocese of Newark. 
And the first place goes to Chaz Muth from Catholic News Service. Yay, Chaz. It's a real honor, Carol. I mean, I humbly accept. Thank you very much, and congratulations to all our winners. Congratulations to all the winners. What's not being presented here today is all of the great work that's been going on in 2020. I mean, it has been an incredible year, and the Catholic press has really been at it with some of the best work I've seen. And we've seen stuff on not only the pandemic, but the riots and the racial divisions and all of that entails and how the church is responding to it. Mark, do you have something up your sleeve? Yes, and I hope all the Catholic Press Award winners get this. That's a big payday. Exactly. <laughs> Congratulations to everyone. I think we've done a phenomenal job covering challenging times and linking the church's response to the unexpected and the changing events in our world. I feel like next year's award show could be a lot different. I feel like there could be some new categories. Most of them involve Zoom, something we never heard of a few years ago. I mean, years ago we thought the BBC man with this kid coming in the interview was so funny. And now we're the BBC man with our cats, our dogs, our kids. Anyway, I think it's been a challenge, but we've adapted. If I'm not on the award committee, but I think some of the awards might be like this. Most tweets during a live streamed event. Record number of Zoom panels covered in one week. Best background in a Zoom. Best use of family members to help set up a Zoom. Also, I think we might have a mask category. Best speaker through a mask and best interview from a social distance. And this last one might be tough to narrow down. Most casually dressed Catholic journalist during the pandemic. From all of us here in Washington, I'm Mark Zimmerman. And I'm Carol Zimmerman. Stay holy, Catholic Press. Good job, Carol. Don't go away yet, because we do actually have more to show you. We're gonna show you all of the awards that the Catholic Press Association has awarded this year. And they're gonna come up in alphabetical order by the publication or news organization, so stay tuned. But we're also gonna hear a few words from some of our bishops here. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Bishop Michael Burbage here from the Diocese of Arlington. First, I wish to congratulate all of the Catholic Media Award winners. You should take great pride in your hard work as well as the recognition you have received from your counterparts. The role of Catholic Media in our nation's history is significant and undeniable. And the profound impact traditional and digital communications tools have had on our church over the past several months is truly historic. Catholic communicators have been called upon to exercise tremendous flexibility and ingenuity, and they have shined in inspiring, educating, and informing the Catholic faithful and the public. Perhaps the most important lesson we have learned is that even when we are physically distanced from one another, we do not have to be spiritually or pastorally distanced from one another. Catholic communicators serve an irreplaceable role in ensuring we are always connected in fellowship and faith. While maintaining our traditional and time-tested ways of communicating and publishing the good news, dioceses, religious orders, independent Catholic media, and others know that we must increase our investment in modern tools for reaching the faithful and our neighbors. This is a reality of our church in the modern era, one that I know each of you take seriously. Again, to those winning awards today, congratulations. To all who have made the virtual conference and award ceremony, ceremony possible, thank you. And to all Catholic communicators, may our Lord bless you in your good and noble work, now and always. Hello, I'm Archbishop Gregory Hartmeyer from the Archdiocese of Atlanta, and I serve as a member of the Communications Committee of the USCCB. So it's my pleasure uh, to thank all of the members of the Catholic Press Association, 
uh, together with my fellow bishops for the work that is being done to spread the gospel and support the church. Throughout the years, members of the Catholic press have evolved as the media landscape has transformed. From newsprint and magazines that took weeks to plan, produce, and deliver, to the instantaneous spread of video and social media posts. One thing remained constant, however. Your commitment to the gospel makes Catholic media different. Your bishops, pastors, and the people in your diocese appreciate your dedication to your church and to the excellence of your craft. Congratulations to all those being recognized this year and thank you for your dedication. Jesus calls us to make disciples and to be a missionary church with an outward focus. That's why I believe Catholic outreach and communications are critical ministries of evangelization. I congratulate all of the Catholic Press Association Award recipients for their efforts to keep the church connected with the community and to share the love and mercy of Jesus Christ with a world in need of healing and hope. Congratulations. The message of the gospel is more urgently needed today in a world where the new normal is not normal. Making the message of God's infinite love and everlasting mercy known is the great task facing the church today. And so the church needs honest, faithful, and intelligent Catholic media to help keep the church faithful to its missionary calling. Your ministry, the ministry of truth, is crucial in a post-truth world. My congratulations to you all for the work that you do, and in particular to the winners of the 2020 Gabriel Awards. May God bless you all, and may God continue to bless us through you. A lot of families are going through difficult times with this virus going around. Last Knights of Columbus are delivering these boxes full of food. Thank you, Knights of Columbus. It means a lot to me and my family that the Knights are there to support us. The Little Sisters of the Poor take care of the elderly. When we heard that they were in dire straits for certain supplies, we made a delivery. The Knights of Columbus have become guardian angels for the Little Sisters. Native populations are always hit disproportionately hard by pandemics. The Leave No Neighbor Behind initiative could show them that you're not alone. We were really so grateful for the Knights of Columbus donations. We go shopping for people that can't get out, for the elderly, the sick. Our brothers, we'll do anything we have to do to help our community. With the pandemic, a few international students could not get back to their country. There's no food near at hand. The Knights of Columbus actually bring the food here themselves. Thanks, Knights of Columbus, for leaving no neighbors behind. My name is Ryan Fielding. I'm 17 years old, and I started the Kapuna Needs Project along with the help of my dad and some of his fellow Knights of Columbus. Thank you to the Knights of Columbus for leaving no neighbor behind. Our local food kitchen, they need more food. Their clientele has grown to a lot of people that lost their job. After this week, we've done about 1,300 meals for the homeless. This community's hard hit. They're devastated with jobs and they need food. The nights coming in was amazing. They've been a blessing to us. People are hungry and the nights always meet that need. Being here with my son, it's a good way to show him putting faith into action. I'm super proud of my dad for being in the Knights of Columbus. As a pastor, to cut costs, I had to stop the lawn care. And right away, the Knights put together a whole schedule. We have an opportunity to show our kindness to priests that have given so much over the years. We're bringing cleaning supplies to a homeless veterans shelter and pizza 
to the front lines at Norwalk Hospital and Notre Dame Health and Rehab Center. The Knights of Columbus have been a great help because it's keeping my guys working. And my staff want to thank the Knights of Columbus for all that they're doing. As brothers band together, we have the manpower, let's use it. Hello everyone, I'm Bishop John McIntyre, an Auxiliary Bishop of Philadelphia. And I'm happy to greet all of you who are attending the Catholic Press Association annual award dinner. From the very first moment that the Lord Jesus began his mission, the mission which the Father had entrusted to him, he asked others to join him in sharing the word that he had heard to the Father. So to all of you who are members of the Catholic media, I, I encourage you to allow, as St. Paul told Timothy, to allow the word of God to to correct and to teach and to reprove you when necessary so that having been formed by the word of God we all might be credible and effective sharers of that word in whatever our vocation is and in a particular way congratulations to all of those who are being honored uh, you who are being honored for the excellence and the commitment of your work in Catholic media congratulations hello I'm Bishop Joel Conson as we pause to honor this year's Catholic Press Association Award winners, we should also acknowledge that this year has been one full of pressure and stress, but also one in which we recognize just how important your mission is. I hope that looking back at all the work you did before we had to worry about social distancing or figuring out how to work from home will remind you that better days are ahead. Your gifts of storytelling have been tested and improved in new formats, including traditional print, video, digital content, and more. This ceremony recognizes your hard work and talent. Congratulations to all of this year's winners.